Welcome to The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're gonna to get some insight into triathlon at the college level. My guest today is Cliff English. He is the coach at Arizona State University, and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to uh, this interview. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, Coach, uh, I usually ask my guests uh, where they went to college. So, where'd you go to school? I'm Canadian from uh, Montreal, Canada. So, I went to school at uh, Concordia University. Ah. So, and then we also have, um, you graduate in Quebec from uh, high school in grade 11, and then you do two years at junior college. So, I also uh, went to a, another school called Dawson College. Got a degree there and then uh, went on to uh, Concordia. Ah, fantastic. So let's just go back into high school a little bit before we get into uh, uh, your sport. Um, when did you start thinking about going to college? Was it uh, freshman year, senior year? When did it all begin for you? Um, it was always pretty heavy uh, on the horizon from my parents. <laughs> you know, it's one of those households you better go. Um, so yeah, that that was you know definitely had a lot of things I wanted to do and thought like a lot a lot of young kids in high school had a lot of aspirations for, for school. Uh, I'd say my voyage is a little less traditional than some. Uh, by the time I got to the end of high school, I was pretty heavy into bicycle racing, and then when I actually did get to uh, junior college when I graduated high school in grade eleven, I did my first year and this is where it became a little less traditional. I actually I decided to leave school. So it's a story uh, that sometimes I don't always tell, it's, uh, but it is a story of coming back to education later on. But I, I had an opportunity to go and race in France on a bike team. So at that point, this was uh, 1988, 89. And uh, you know, Greg LeMond was the big American uh, cyclist back then. And I, uh, by the time in uh, 1989, I was one of the top five cyclists in Canada, and I kind of had these aspirations at that point that I thought I was going to be the next Greg LeMond and got a contract <laughs> to, <laughs> to ride on a team in France. And, you know, uh, first of all, I guess, you know, I started shaving my legs because I was a cyclist, so that was also uh, different for my parents. And then I told them I was going to quit school, which also was another shock. I uh, went over and lived in France as a 17, 18-year-old and um, had a big wake-up call. Uh, competition is about as hard over there for cycling as it is for football in the U.S. in high school. It was incredibly competitive and, uh, you know, it, it was great. It was an incredible experience. Yet at the same time, uh, you know, I, I realized, you know what, I, yeah, this is, this is different. This is, you know, a lot of life all at once for young kids. I was working two jobs to try to get money to go over there. And uh, I literally came back and I couldn't wait get to, to get back to school. <laughs> so <laughs> I, it was like, all right, you know what? You need the backup plan. So I went back to school, but I, I still always continued to train. Uh, obviously, when I say non-traditional, I was in sports that weren't um, at that time college or even you know high school sports. So I was in cycling. And then uh, by nine, the end of 1989, 1990, I was pretty immersed in triathlon. I was hooked with the sport. Uh, same thing, you know, a lot of clubs. So um, I, I, I definitely trained with university clubs back then. And uh, I was also part of a group of athletes that formed the McGill Triathlon Club back in 1996. And um, they were, uh, you know, good friends of mine as well and also training partners and uh, you know, so it just it kind of that way, just going through school and training and, and uh, at that point, I still had, you know, athletic aspirations. I was hoping to make my national team as a triathlete and at the same time I was studying and uh, also the, the non-traditional route. I was uh, more of an art history, history major. I did some exercise science, but I've always enjoyed art and uh <laughs> For some reason, uh, what's interesting how you can, you know, now at 47 years old, I can look back, a lot of it makes sense now. I mean, um, there's lots of other routes that you can take for your coaching education. So in Canada and also similar here in the U.S., we have uh, a lot of coaching uh, courses that you can take, a lot of coaching um, certifications. So I kind of spent a lot of my time outside of university taking all these credentials, worked my way up in Canada to the top level that you can be, which was a level four. 
Um, that's actually a year-long um, course at a, at a university, so it's a year-long program that gives you a diploma in high-performance coaching. So that was something else that I achieved uh, a little later on um, from university. That was like in 2002, 2003. But uh, yeah, I just grew a balance between university, still being an athlete, and then getting myself into that coaching world, exposing myself to coaches, exposing myself, you know, on the practical side, just the coaching, pretty much trying to make a living and pay for, you know, tuition. <laughs> and that's pretty much what I did all the way through the, you know, the, the 1990s. Now, uh, so once you uh, graduated college, um, can you tell me uh, what the process was uh, to get you to become the, the coach at, uh, at Arizona State? Uh, w what was the process? How'd you get there? <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a you know, big gap of years there. So my, my path, you know, I've been very fortunate. It's been a great, great path of coaching. I mean, I just stayed in coaching uh, at that time. After, you know, I was, I think, 96, 97, 98, 99, just started teams, was coaching about 50 to 75 athletes in university clubs, started to get a few athletes who were a little more elite. Um, in 99, I actually had a young female that uh, got second at uh, Junior World Championship, so that's the 16 to 19-year-old range. Um, you know, and then you start having successes as a coach, you start getting other athletes that want to come, you know. So I built this program uh, pretty much on my own that uh, – we starting to get some athletes and then had my first national team athlete in Canada. Uh, at that point in 2002, I decided to move from Montreal over on the East Coast all the way over to uh, the West Coast, Victoria, British Columbia, about as far over as you can go. And uh, that was when I had that opportunity to go back to school. So I was able to go and do this year-long program, immerse myself in coaching sciences, which was incredible for me then. Uh, I had a few years of coaching under my belt at that point. And it, it coincided uh, at that point as well, working as a development coach. We had our national team for Canada was based out there. And a uh, young athlete that uh, was second at uh, Junior Worlds was still working with me at that point. And she was a, a big part of, um, you know, my, my long-term development plan that I had for my, my athlete and athletes. And uh, she did. She was my first Olympic athlete. So in Athens in 2004, she ended up making the team in Canada. And, you know, at that point, I'd been going to a lot of World Cups, World Championships, you know, just a lot of it self-funded, just, you know, making a, trying to make a living. Uh, you know, you kind of go from student, starving athlete to starving coach is uh, pretty much the career path I've been on. And then, uh, yeah, after 2004, you know, I had a lot more athletes. I think at that point I was almost coaching about 50% of the national team in Canada. Started coaching some long course athletes. Um, one notable uh, Canadian athlete, Peter Reed, who went on to win three Hawaiian Ironmans. I started to work a little bit with him. And yeah, by about uh, mid-2005, I got a call from the U.S. and um, the high performance director for the U.S. program, who I'd known a little bit, was, uh, hey, hey, are you interested in maybe uh, coming down on uh, you know, for a trial period, and and uh, we would be interested in hiring you as a national team coach for the U.S. So <laughs> that, that's how the path kind of went. And then I, yeah, end of 2005, got hired as the U.S. national team coach for triathlon, and uh, did that for about three and a half years. And I uh, went, you know, had athletes that I personally coached going to all the world champs, the Pan Am Games, and up until Beijing. And then after that, I. You know, I, I was based in the U.S. at that point and uh, decided to go out, go out on my own and move down to Tucson, Arizona. I've been uh, at, So I spent a lot of time down there and I was just running training camp, continued to coach athletes. And at, at this point, I guess I had had uh, a, a few world champions in a long course at this point, had people that have gone, you know, multiple podiums at the Warren Ironman. So I really had this, I guess, very fortunate Great, you know, this career going that I was coaching people at all the different di disciplines in, in triathlon from Ironman to the Olympics and even worked with people that were doing the Xterra, which is uh, the off road, the mountain bike. Had a uh, couple uh, that went on to, you know, to world titles as well. And, you know, it's just one of those things you just, you know, kind of keep going. You know, you just put your head down, do your work. And um, yeah, so I, you know, from 2004 to 2016, I always had an athlete at the Olympic Games. And it was interesting because then 
But around the 2015, I'd heard that, you know, I knew that triathlon had been added to the NCAA as an emerging sport. I knew that some programs were starting to add it, you know, and, and uh, so I was keeping an eye on that movement. I, it was something that when I was with our national governing body with USA Triathlon, we always knew or wanted, it was a bit of like, we knew it would be good for the sport. We also, you know, had that, that we realized there was a gap in development where a lot of times we'd see, you know, incredible uh, USAT does a great job of the youth programs and their senior programs. Once you get the, the athlete to about the college age, you know, they usually go and either swim or run. And so a lot of times we would lose some of our best athletes to schools for running or swimming. And this is something that we always dreamt about, you know, this opportunity to be able to have, you know, athletes that are in the sport of triathlon that they can all go on to a school, get a scholarship, earn a degree and do their sport. So it's a, it wasn't perhaps going to be the only pipeline for development, but it was definitely a good pipeline, a good possibility. You look at, you know, some of the best schools that have a really big Olympic heritage, you know, Obviously, you can't, when you say that, you, you, you can't not say Stanford when you think about running or swimming. Um, you know, just a lot of great schools that, that, that are putting Olympians and, and usually medalists out there. So uh, it was something I was, I was definitely watching. And then uh, I knew ASU was, was adding. And uh, you know, a lot of people uh, were telling me I need to put my name in the hat. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it. You know, I, I, I think uh, with obviously the years I put in to get to this point, uh, a lot of people saw me as a coach with a lot of experience and someone that's actually developed athletes, but have also had athletes succeed on the top level. And um, I went through the interview process, did a bunch of phone calls, and I would, did, uh, I was actually, in 2015, I was at the Wire and Ironman with a bunch of athletes. I think I had a fifth place finisher at that point, in the pro division, and I was getting calls from Bob Bowman. They set up at the, near the end of our uh, interview process that Bob was going to call the final four and kind of decide who would make it to the final two. And uh, my days at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, I'd, you know, bumped into him a few times. And, yeah, it was good to catch up. And, you know, uh, I think he put in a good word. And then I moved to the next round, got off the plane on the red eye from Hawaii back in, uh, yeah, 2015, October, I want to say 15th. Did my final interviews, and that was when I met you know, Rocky Harris, my former boss, who's now the CEO of USA Triathlon, uh, Ray Anderson, and I knew then, I'm like, well, I, I want to work for these people. I mean, it, it was this incredible environment, people that, you know, work hard, uh, give you the keys to the car, so to speak. They, you know, they let you do your job. And uh, by the time we finished lunch, they made the offer, and I said yes, and that's that's basically it. Uh, I was still coaching almost 28 athletes at the time, 15, 16 of them were professional. And, and uh, I still had an athlete, uh, two athletes, in fact, going to uh, the Rio Olympic Games. But I pretty much hit the ground running, uh, started recruiting, started making calls, reached out to all my contacts, the uh, people with USA Triathlon, great, you know, good development coaches that I knew. And I'm like, hey, you know, I've been watching this you know, young lady, what, you know, could I get her contact? What do you think? You know, and just took it from there. So, uh, how many schools in the NCAA actually have triathlon as a as a sport? So, we're at, I might be off by a number or two, but, but we should be at around thirty one, I believe. So, oh. the magic number is forty. So, when when ASU added, we were actually the tenth school to add. Um, you know, we've definitely done, and a lot of people have, have been chipping in behind the scenes. I know ourselves while well, we've done as much as we can working with uh, USA Triathlon. I've talked to certain conferences whenever they have a, a school that's kind of on the verge, they'll, you know, get me a phone call and I can definitely talk to, you know, a senior woman's administrator or even ADs. And we've, you know, been really trying our, our you know, as much as we can to promote the sport and kind of help them. One of the biggest things that we found too is that a lot of schools don't know about the sport. And then a lot of schools are intimidated by, you know, we have a lot of equipment. We're probably one of the most equipment-heavy sports there is. You know, so they think, wow, it's got to be an expensive sport. And we always, you know, really just say, like, look, you know, you got a swim team, you have a pool, you got facilities, no need for a facility build. You know, you got a track, you got trails, you got track and cross-country team, good to go. You know, we're, we're actually a pretty good sport to add. You know, if you get a good relationship, even with a bike store, Typically, they'll, you know, give you bikes at wholesale or cost, you know. So, you know, we were able to do it on a lot less budget than people thought, you know. And, and your your roster can be 
you know, as small as six to eight and you can get up to 15 or 16 and wow. it's, uh, yeah, you know, we're, we're, you know, smaller programs and what you, as a D one school, we got six and a half scholarships. And I like this, you know, we spread them out based off of, you know, academics and definitely off of athletic, uh, caliber. And, uh, usually I like to keep a little in a bank that reward performance as well. So what, uh, what type of kids do you look for uh, that can actually do triathlon at the college level? With our program, we're very competitive. You know, in our first year, we had, we had a good team, a strong team uh, in 2016. But I, you know, I, I know the caliber of athletes we have out there. There's a lot of incredible young ladies um, in that 16 and 19. I mean, even the youth. I mean, that, what's interesting, I, I, I am asked that question a lot, you know, and... and um, we, you know, a lot of people are like, well, it's not a high school sport. Where do you recruit? How do you recruit? You know, like I said, once again, USA Triathlon has done a tremendous job of developing the sport. I believe my, my numbers might be a little, not 100% accurate, but I think there are almost 866 youth events nationwide, like running all through the summer. I mean, it's there's so many clubs. There's so many, you know, young programs out there, uh, even at junior elite nationals. Um, they have age group nationals and then elite nationals, and that uh, that 16 and 19 year old group, there was 90 kids in there, 90 incredible young women. Um, so that's pretty much what I do. I mean, I always tell a lot of coaches that are getting into it, you know, and um, they're like, "Well, where are you recruiting?" Like, get yourself to those junior races. There's a bunch throughout the states, and you know, even in uh, Canada, they have a big North American and South American circuit where the best juniors are competing against each other, getting all this experience. Um, you know, if you look in my roster. There's no secret. All, all the girls, like right now, I've got our three freshmen. Two of them have been on the podium at Junior Elite Nationals for the past two, three years. You know, I mean, that's the kind of growth we're, we're looking at. You know, we're looking at, you know, young women that are excellent in school, but they, you know, they, what's been nice about ASU is that they are very supportive of Olympic stream sports. They want the Olympics. They, they you know, they're big fans of it. Dr. Crow, our, our president's a big fan of the Olympic movement. So, you know, it's my aspiration is that I do want to have someone coming out of this program that's going to the games. I mean, that's my mission. I've kind of said that from the very beginning. So we are attracting kids that are serious like that. You know, we're getting this, this these incredible young women that, that uh, make me look good. <laughs> So, so now a student athlete comes to uh, Arizona State. Um, what can they expect when they get there? Give me a year round of uh, what happens. Do they get there in early August? Do they get there in September? What happens in the fall? What happens in the spring? Give me a sense of what, what they're going through when they come there. Yeah, so our, our sport's a fall sport. So our, it happens very, very quickly, very similar to cross country. So uh, our first competition is typically in early September and uh, we, we go pretty rapidly through about three to four competitions and then our national champ is November 4th. And uh, one thing what, what's been really great, but we also felt that uh, last year, you know, we, we wanted to host nationals. We also felt, uh, like I said before, it's a bit of our the role that we wanted to take on is we're not going to be successful at the school if we're not successful in building the sport. So we've really been doing as much as we can to, to help build it. And one of the things that we felt would be a good way to do that is to host national. So we worked with the city of Tempe. We have Tempe Town Lake, which is host to many triathlons, uh, pretty much season round. Um, they host, they, since 2005, they've been hosting Ironman Arizona, which typically sells out within 24 hours. Wow. And yeah, it's amazing. And they get about 2,800 participants. So you know, it's a great time of the year right next to the airport. So it's, uh, we thought it was going to be a really good venue. And, um, you know, it's amazing because in uh, 2016, we had the national champs, like NCAA champs, was in New Orleans, had about 46 competitors. Last year when we hosted, we had 83. And, uh, you know, being able to bring it up to numbers like that, like doubling was, was huge. Well, a little less than doubling. But then... So we've actually also won the bid again to host this year. So uh, we're excited about, you know, doing the same thing with the event. So, yeah, we typically have athletes, the student athletes will arrive on campus somewhere around the 8th, 9th, or 10th of August. They'll go through their physicals. Um, once they get their physicals, some of them actually, if they come for orientation earlier in the summer, they can get their physical 
what's a bit of a challenge with our sport, we have all this equipment. So one of the things with the bike, you know, it's, it's not as easy as just handing someone a soccer ball or a baseball bat. You have to make sure you get the fit right. So we have some excellent um, fitters in town. This company, Psychologic, they work with some of the best cyclists in the world, Tour de France level athletes. And uh, so they're just around the corner from us. So we, once our athletes get their physicals, we get them all basically fitted on their bikes so they can really be dialed in. And then first day of practice, typically that first Monday, this year it was uh, the 13th of August. So we're able to get about two two to two and a half weeks before our first competition of training in. And uh, yeah, we're then we're going. Um, we definitely don't sugarcoat it when we do recruiting trips or when we uh, have official, unofficial visits. We do tell people it's hot. <laughs> you can't get away, get around it. Um, you know, we definitely tell, tell a lot of them you know, to, if they are not coming from warm weather areas to, you know, maybe overdress when they're doing their easy runs or when they're biking just to wear a sweatshirt or something because uh, it's hot when you get here. We train early in the morning, especially in the, the bike and the run. The swimming, you know, we have um, lots of ways that uh, our, our facility keeps the pool at, at a good, consistent temperature. Um, throughout the night, they do a lot of aeration, so the, the pool is not a problem. So we usually swim a little later in the day, mm-hmm. get all the early... Uh, uh, you know the bike and the runs done early in the morning so that's that's what they can typically expect and um after that we kind of go a little bit of our off season we do a, a proper break over the holidays uh, and then we start up we're still able to do our our second segment of the season starting in january so that's where we actually get a lot of our volume our building our technical work our strength you know so we definitely and we also do a few little, little training camps we'll go to different locations in arizona and, uh, you know, you, it's, it's a great state for bike riding, great weather. So we're able to go and get some great mountain climbing in, that type of thing. And uh, what we've been able to do, because there's not a collegiate circuit in the winter semester, we're able to do, there's lots of other competitions. And it kind of works out really well with my development plan for the girls is there's these races that are all part of the USA Triathlon development circuit and also part of that um we have this international triathlon union that has the world cup. So we have a bunch of these events that are in uh, two of them. The first ones that start in North America are actually in uh, Florida. So March 3rd, March 10th, you can do Claremont and Sarasota and do that kind of double. So that's something that we've been doing the last few seasons. We intend on doing it again. We're able to obviously count the races. We're able to go over there with our whole team, get the experience for the girls. And it's a very high level. Some of them are even competing in these races against, you know, national team athletes and even Olympians. Um, what's also really good about this, a lot of the requirements for national teams is that they do these races as well. So we're almost kind of uh, doing the old, uh, you know, that killing the bird with two stone or one stone type of thing that, that, uh, you know, they're, they're getting that experience and still developing. We're giving them goals, so we're able to keep that year going. And at the same time, they're meeting requirements for their national team. As we speak right now, we have two young women representing the school and their countries at the World Championships in Australia. We have uh, Hannah Henry from Canada who's over there, and we also have Audrey Ernst who's from Chicago for the U.S. She just left on Saturday. So, you know, that's, that's what, the, you know, the school, that's what they're all about, performing on you know, every level and, and, uh, definitely, it's definitely something that we look to do here in our program. And, uh, yeah. Right. Well, we're coming to the end of our show and, uh, usually I ask my guests, um, what advice do you want to give to the parents and their kids that want to come to Arizona state to, to do tri- triathlon? Definitely, uh, come check us out. Hopefully, uh, unofficial or official visit. Uh, if you're, you know, child, youngster, youngin, <laughs> whatever you want to call them, is in a triathlon or, I mean, we have a few of our girls that were just swimmers and runners in high school. And, you know, one, one of our top girls on the team that's been on, on the national championship team the last two years, wasn't even a triathlete when she came to the school. It's unbelievable. I mean, she swam and ran very good athlete, took incredibly well, very quickly to biking, incredibly skilled. And, you know, She's got some good coaching, I like to think. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, you know, and, and so it can be done. But definitely if they're swimmers and runners and, and they have a few years, maybe they're still sophomores in high school, 
get them into the circuit, get them on the triathlon, uh, USA triathlon, um, their website, incredible resource. They have all the youth events, they have camp clinic. There's, you know, that's pretty much what I tell parents. Um, you know, do you def- definitely check it out? There's always a race competition near you. Just get them immersed in it and it gives them options. You know, you definitely, maybe they're a very good swimmer and they can maybe be a D1, D2, or D3, but they can also, you know, come and compete D1, D2, and triathlon. So it just gives the parents options as well for their kids. And, um, you know, what's really great right now, you know, we're a smaller team, we're 11, but you can truly see that everyone on this team are just purely dedicated. They just are triathletes. They want to be triathletes. They've come from various backgrounds, but that's what, Triathlon's always been about, you know, that uh, a lot of different sports and, and people just get this, this get really addicted to our sport. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming on. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time. <laughs>